Here, I want to study through the book of Daniel. We're in chapter 2, verse 1, and we've been talking about dreams since Friday, and I'm just going to continue from where we stopped yesterday. Uh, we've, we've talked about what dreams are, our disposition to dreams, you know, I was yesterday. I was like trying to talk about how to get an interpretation or, or, or an understanding to dreams, you know. And uh, let me pick up a bit from that, you know. When we have a dream, right? Uh, knowing that when it comes to dreams, uh, it could come from several sources, right? Pastor Shedley, you're welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So I'm just going to continue. I'm just still talking about dreams, continuing from where we stopped yesterday. You know, when we have a dream, you know, a, a good percentage of our dreams, I call it 80%, come from the disposition of our, of our mind, our subconsciousness, what we've occupied ourselves with. And I believe that Joe talks about dreams come from the multitude of business, the multitude of what we have uh, entertained our mind with or told, right? That's what the scripture says, and that's been my experience with dreams, right? Especially dreams, I, I get, you can get to a place of being oppressed by your dream, depending on who is in control of your mind. And if you're in a place of peace, rest in your mind, then your dreams don't necessarily uh, disturb you as it were. I mean, if there's one from God, yes, then you can seek him from understanding. But you people get all of these troubling dreams as if someone is oppressing them, you know, in the dream, or maybe they are eating in the dream or whatever. And you can easily tie it to the state of their mind, right? If you are winning in the state of your mind, then your dreams are curtailed. They are curtailed to the important ones. Right, they are curtailed to things that make sense, or you just know that they are irrelevant, but they, are, they don't take that big portion of your life. But if you have a mind that is not fully under control, a mind that you have not um you have not brought under control, a mind that is not sound, right? About that, Paul was writing to uh Timothy, he says that God has not given us the spirit of timidity, but the spirit of, of, of power of love and of a sound mind. God's intention, desire, disposition towards us is that we have a sound mind, a mind that is working for us, a mind that is serving us, a mind that, a mind that is running errand for us, not a mind that is controlling us, not a mind that we don't have control of, right? If that's when we talk about pe person, someone losing their mind. When you lose your mind, then your mind is controlling you. Your mind has mastery over you. Your mind is not, as it were, giddled. Your mind is not being giddled with a belt of truth. Your mind is like everywhere. It's not curtailed. It's not, it's not held together to serve you and to direct you in the path of your purpose, in the path of God's intent for your life. Your, your, your mind is not running around for you. Rather, your mind is, is, is controlling you. You are running around for your mind, right? And, and that's where we talk about uh, being mentally sick, right? Mental sickness is just a mind that is not living up to its full potential, a mind that is incapacitated, that is not living uh, to the, to the place, the potential, and the level that it's supposed to live to, right? And, and that comes from different things, right? Which is part of what we saw here with Nebuchadnezzar. And I, I still want to go there, right? Nebuchadnezzar got to a place where it was said that his spirit left him, meaning that he was, was, was in a place where he had no energy for life, as it 